Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Don't Burn the House Down. On today's episode, I'm gonna teach you how to jerk your meat. No, I, I can't say that. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Don't Burn the House Down. On today's episode, I'm gonna teach you how to make jerky meat. That's right, we're gonna take a cut of meat that doesn't get a whole lot of attention and we're gonna show it some love. I'm gonna teach you how to love your meat. Carl, I can't say that <sighs> Today's episode, I'm going to teach you how to take eye of round steak and turn it into beef jerky using only a few simple ingredients and one special ingredient. That way, you can smother the special ingredient all over your meat. God damn it, Carl! <laughs> dieting is hard. And one of the hardest parts about dieting is making sure that you eat plenty of lean protein without all the fat and sugars and all the garbage that comes with it. That's right, you wanna have some nice thin meat in your life cause fat meat is bad for <sighs> So here's the ingredients list on how we're gonna make some smoked jerky. First and foremost, this is beef eye round steaks. You can buy this like I did at my local store called Coborns or also Walmart sells it as well but you want eye round steaks, or you can do an eye of round roast. Uh, if you get an eye of round roast, then you'll wanna shave it nice and thin, cutting it by hand. That way uh, it, it takes a, a lot less time on the smoker. Just make sure that you choose the thin cuts of meat because for this particular venture, thick meat is bad. You'll choke on the thick. <laughs> I recommend about three pounds of the meat, whatever kind of meat you use. Make sure it's not marbled, it's not steak, and it doesn't have a lot of fat on it. As you smoke or dehydrate jerky, if it has a lot of fat in it, it will turn rancid and it will make you sick. That's right, you'll end up gagging on your... I can't do that. Okay, the rest of our ingredients are as follows. Black pepper, kosher salt, Whoa. Oh, geez. War. Warchester. Shy. Sh that stuff. Onion powder. Garlic powder. Jalapenos. One bottle of Dr. Pepper or Pepsi or Coke. And whiskey. So stick around and I'm going to show you how to make your own jerky today. Don't burn the house down. So there's three parts to this recipe. The marinade, which we're gonna do first, the prepping of the meat, which we'll do next, and then the actual cooking. Now you can cook this either in a dehydrator or you can use a smoker. I'm gonna be using the smoker. So first things first, in a medium-sized saucepan, we're gonna take our entire bottle of Dr. Pepper or Coke or Pepsi, whatever cola you prefer, you pour it in there. This is the base of our marinade. Next, we're going to slice up our four jalapenos as thin as we possibly can. Remember, anytime you cut peppers, you want to wear gloves because any jalapeno juice on your hands if it comes into contact anywhere else on your body, you are going to regret it. Now that we've got all the jalapenos sliced, throw them in the Dr. Pepper. That sizzle lets you know it's working. Now to the marinade, we're gonna add one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. And if I'm saying that wrong, please correct me in the comments. Helpful hint. Once you add the liquid ingredient, make sure you rinse this out and dry it so that your other ingredients don't stick to the spoon. Up next, two tablespoons of kosher salt. Then two teaspoons of ground black pepper. Mm. 
one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, and then a couple of shots of your favorite whiskey. I am using Maker's Mark just because it's relatively cheap and I like the flavor of it when I cook. So I'll do about three shots for that. And one shot for me. Cheers. Mm. If you like a little extra kick, feel free to add in some dabs of your favorite hot sauce. I love El Yucateco, which you can get it at Walmart or any Mexican food store. So I'll just glob a couple of those in there. It adds a little bit more heat and a little bit more flavor. Pour that in as you see fit. Then we're gonna take a spoon, mix everything together. And we're gonna throw this on the stove on medium heat. We're gonna let it boil for probably about 10 to 15 minutes just so that it reduces a little bit. You don't want it to be this runny when you go to marinate your meat. Uh, and you also want these jalapenos to cook into the sauce. So I usually let it cook for about as long as it takes me to prepare the meat. And by then the jalapenos will be nice and wilted uh, and all their flavor will be absorbed into the liquid. So I'm gonna throw this on the burner on medium heat and then we're gonna start working on the meat. So here's why I like the eye round uh, pre-cut steaks that you can get from probably any grocery store or if you do have a butcher that you trust, he may slice this for you as well. There's two things that you have to have when it comes to making jerky. You have to have uniform thickness of all of your pieces. Otherwise, you're gonna have the thinner pieces cook faster and the thicker pieces will take longer to cook. And unless you're babysitting them every 20 or 30 minutes, you're gonna have some pieces that end up super, super overcooked and really tough and some of them that might not be actually cooked all the way through. Now I've got some pretty good knife skills and I'm pretty good at cutting a roast to be uniform consistency all the way through, but I'm also incredibly lazy. So if I can buy them like this already, that's what I'm gonna do. The only thing you need to watch for when you open these up is make sure there isn't excessive marbling throughout the meat, which this one is about as far as I would let the marbling go. And a lot of times on these steaks, they will have a small fat cap ribbon here on the end. And all you're gonna have to do is you have to trim this off. So every piece of meat that comes in here has got to have that little fat cap trimmed off because you do not want to smoke that or dehydrate that. Uh, fat like this will turn rancid if you uh, don't cook it all the way through. And if you do store it at room temperature, which you can do for jerky, it will turn rancid in a matter of days. So you want all of the fat removed off of this as much as possible. So I'm gonna trim the fat off right now. <laughs> it's probably a good time to warn you that as you're boiling this stuff down, make sure you open a window because the steam coming off of there will absolutely burn your lungs like crazy. Ugh. But as you can see, the jalapenos are starting to get nice and dark. They're starting to get wilted and it's starting to thicken up a bit. You don't want this to be like thick and soupy by any means, but you definitely want it to reduce down. So I'm gonna let it keep going. It's been going for about 10 minutes. I'll probably give it another five minutes or so. So back on the heat. Now that we have the meat all trimmed up, the next step is to beat it. <sighs> That's right. You need to beat your meat. Whatever. I use just a meat tenderizer with the not flat side. You wanna use the knobby side. And just knock it, knock it flat. You do not want to beat this to the point where it's completely pulverized and falling apart, but you definitely want the meat to be nice and tender. So hit it hard, hit it a lot, but don't break through to the cutting board. So after about 15 minutes of boiling, I pulled the marinade off the burner and it's looking about the consistency that I want it to be. It's nice and thick, nice and thick. The, uh, the jalapenos are actually 
very dark color. They almost took on the color of the marinade. And then uh, what you have to do now is cool it down. So what I do is I pour a bunch of ice in the sink and just set the pot in the sink so that it gets cool. You do not want this to be hot when you're gonna marinate the meat. So this is gonna continue cooling in the sink. The final step in preparing the meat is to get these just a little bit smaller than they are now. When you go to smoke something, if it's this big and after you hammer it out, uh, they, they tend to get a little bit big. It takes way too long to smoke if they're this size. So what I do is I'll just go through and cut all these in half. Some of them I'll go into thirds, but most of them a half. That way I've got pieces about that size. And feel free to experiment. If you like the idea of having bigger cuts of jerky and you don't think that they take too long to cook or that they cook at weird uh, different uh, times or whatever, then, then you know, do what you want to do. And that's it. We've got the meat in very manageable jerky sizes. And the next step is we're gonna combine it with the marinade. The next step is the easy one. You gotta bag your meat. <laughs> the next step is the easy one. You gotta put your meat into a bag and combine it with the marinade. I use a one gallon freezer bag. Put all the meat in here. Grab our marinade, which is now cooled to well below room temperature. Pour it over top. Make sure to get all those delicious jalapenos out of there. Then you're gonna seal it up trying to remove as much air as you possibly can. You want this to be pretty much air free. On the first run we'll do that. And then we're just gonna kinda wiggle it all around here. Make sure that marinade gets through every one of those slices. And that is where we are currently at. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lay this in the refrigerator flat, and I'm going to let it sit overnight in its marinade. Uh, throughout the, the evening, and if I wake up in the middle of the night, I'll flip it over, kind of massage it a little bit more, kind of work that marinade in, make sure that all these pieces are nice and even coated so they absorb the meat. So that goes in the fridge, and then uh, the rest of it we'll come back and do tomorrow. All right, good morning. It is day two. The jerky has been marinating all night. It's probably about ooh, 12 to 13 hours worth of marinade. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get the jerky out of the Ziploc bag. We're going to pat it dry with paper towels because you don't want it to be super wet when you throw it in the smoker. And then we're going to put it on the smoker racks and get it going. I do have the smoker set to 175 right now. It is preheating. You always want to make sure you preheat your smoker first. So we're going to get this dried off on the racks and then in the smoker. So what I like to do is lay down just a nice sheet of paper towels on a cookie tray here. and then just lay out the pieces individually. And I leave the jalapenos in the bag. I do not want to smoke the jalapenos. Those are just for flavor. If there's little chunks on there, I don't get worried about it. If there's seeds on there, I don't get worried about it. But I, I do want to avoid the actual chunks of jalapeno. Once that is laid out, we just take another bunch of paper towels, just kind of push it down to get all the remaining marinade off the top. You just want to get the, the bulk of it off. It doesn't need to be super dry by any, any means. And then we're going to transfer them over to the smoker tray, or rack I should say. When
when you're loading these onto your smoker rack, as with anything else that you smoke, make sure you leave plenty of space so that the smoke can work all the way around each piece of meat. You do not want these touching on the racks. And it doesn't have to be a ton of space uh, because these are not gonna expand or anything while they're cooking. Just make sure there is daylight in between each piece. Usually when I do uh, the three pounds of jerky like this, I can get it almost all fit onto two racks if I lay it out kind of strategically. So grand total, we ended up with about two and a half racks of jerky. So it is now time to take them out and put them in the smoker. Let's go outside. So I'm using my Pit Boss Series 5 vertical smoker. I am absolutely in love with this thing. I've had it for going on about a year now. Uh, it's got a huge hopper that has the pellets in the back. I have owned Traegers, I have owned kettle grills, I've owned kettle smokers, I've owned pretty much everything you can think of. And this one is by far and away the best. You can load so many pellets into there that you don't even have to worry about it. And it holds five full-size racks. So depending upon how many people you're cooking for, that's amazing. So we're gonna load these into the smoker. It is already preheated. I set this on 175 degrees. And the reason that I do that is because pellet smokers, they maintain their temperature by adding more pellets, letting it burn, and then shutting the pellets off and letting it burn out. If you actually put that on a gauge, what tends to happen is, even though you set it on 175, that's just the average. So it'll actually get up to like 225 degrees, but then it will drop down into like the 125, 140 range. So if you set it at 175, it will spend a lot of time well above 175. If you're doing this in a dehumidifier uh, or a dehydrator, you wanna set it at like 190. You wanna set it on the max setting. You do have to make sure that you get the meat nice and dry and it requires a little bit higher heat than it does for like fruits and vegetables, stuff like that. So I'm gonna set a timer on this for two hours. I'll come out and check on it. Each batch has been a little bit different, so it usually goes anywhere between two and three hours. Oh, okay. uh, but if you overcook it, it's gonna come out like shoe leather. So you definitely have to make sure that it gets enough time in there that it becomes jerky, but too much time and it's, it's pretty gross. And I've done a couple batches where I screwed it up. So set a timer for two hours, we'll come back out and check on it. All right, we are officially at the two hour mark. We're gonna grab one of these out of the smoker and take a look and see at how they're looking so far. A little word of advice, whenever you open the smoker, stand back, because it is smoky. Ooh. All right, so let me show you where we're at right now. Hopefully that focuses in okay. What you're looking for is when you go to bend the jerky, you want it to be kind of starting to break apart. That's not focusing, is it? There you go. You want it to kind of be breaking apart uh, with, with no liquid coming out of it. So I can tell you right now, this is still pretty kind of gooey. The texture of it isn't quite right yet. You can see it's kind of flexible. So we're gonna put this in for another half an hour and then we'll check it from there. Hey you. You know what time it is? I think it's jerky time. Let's take a look. Two and a half hours. That, ladies and gentlemen, is done. You can see as you start to bend it now, it's breaking apart. I can focus in on that starting to break apart. You can tell that it's not very squishy anymore. And if you rip it apart, it's fibrous on the inside as opposed to being meaty. So this is done. I've already shut the smoker off. I'm gonna throw all the pieces of jerky on the tray here. So the jerky's done and there's one final step before you package it. I'm not sure many people know about this, Put it right back into a gallon bag as soon as you get it out of the smoker or out of the dehydrator. 
You can see all the steam in the bag right there already condensing. This jerky still has a little bit of moisture in it. And if you sit it in the bag like this, it'll actually pull a little bit of that moisture back in instead of radiating it out. This will make your jerky a little bit less dry and tough and leathery, and it will make it almost like a meat stick that you'll get from the store. That's the way I prefer mine. If you like your jerky to be like a hard tack jerky, then just let it sit and cool on the pan, but let it cool all the way before you package it. Now, the jerky will keep at room temperature for a couple of weeks, but what I usually do is I have a food saver and I'll cut little packets about this size and then I will food save it. Just seal them up, suck all the air out and seal them up. You can get food savers on Amazon. I'll leave an affiliate link in the comment section below. Uh, the food saver, uh, the, the vacuum is the, the best thing you'll ever own in your kitchen, hands down. You can buy in bulk uh, and then you can, you know, patty up some hamburgers and freeze it up in individual packages, you can save a ton of money. But for this, it works really well. What I do is I put these in three ounce packages and then I toss them in the, the uh, drawer in my refrigerator and I grab them out as I want them. I'll probably get maybe eight to 10 packages out of here. And if you figure something like this at the grocery store would cost you probably about five bucks for three ounces, and that's a heck of a saving. So homemade jerky, package it up, keep it however you want but uh, make sure you eat it because it's going to be delicious. That is all for today, folks. I really hope you enjoy the jerky. I'll leave a, uh, just a quick section in the description below. These are Amazon affiliate links, uh, but I will put the link to the food saver vacuum that I use as well as to the smoker. If you truly care about cooking and smoking and all that stuff, I'd recommend picking up a good smoker like that. And uh, like I said, the food saver vacuum is a lifesaver in the kitchen. So thanks for watching and uh, enjoy your jerky.